Hey everybody, this is Laura. I'm trying something a little different today. I'm going to kind of talk through coloring this Eastern Bluebird. And um, the Bluebird has a blue head and blue back and wings and then a white stomach. And then we think of this part here as red, but when I was looking at my um my source it's really more of a brownish red than a bright red so that's why i have picked out um just a regular brown and obviously this is a lighter brown and this is a darker brown so we're going to go with this one since it has more of a reddish tone and i might be adding some other colors to it once I get in there. So I'm gonna start out with my base. And I like to work from light to dark. So I'm just gonna block in, block in the white belly. And since I'm gonna be adding some other colors in here, some gray to get a few of the um, shadows and get the roundness. I'm not going to fill it in too much. I sketched out the bird with a color pencil and you can see that color coming through a little bit but because these are not necessarily photorealistic I'm okay with that. I kind of like I kind of like the the look of the color showing through and a little bit under the tail here. I'm going to put that aside. And now I'm going to block in the blue. I'm going to start with a lighter blue. And you may think, you know, I've never seen a bird that color. You're right. The cool thing about oil pastels is you can build and you can layer. The other thing is, again, I have a camera. I can take a picture of a bird. Art is not about always replicating real life. Art is your interpretation. Art through your eye and through your hands and materials. So don't get too hung up on that would be my advice. Sometimes I have to give myself that advice too, so I'm preaching to the choir. I'm trying to convince myself. Now this is more of the true bluebird color, but I'm going to still let some of that lighter color show through because as with most things in life, they are not just one blank solid color. Light hits different parts in different ways. And it also helps to create that kind of texture of the feathers. And a little bit darker here on these parts of the wings. And in fact, I'm going to add a little bit of black to because they've got some really dark places. If I had a dark gray, I might use that instead so it wouldn't go so dark, but um, my gray is a little bit more of a traditional gray. So I'm gonna add a little bit of shading into the feathers around the curve of the belly that helps to kind of create that more of a 3D effect. And as you can see, my birds right now do not have legs. I was trying to decide how I want them to be displayed if they need legs, if I will add legs for support. But right now, they are legless and that's okay going to create some of that lighter blue using the gray. 
And then I can also come back to the white. Now the colors that I am seeing are a little bit different than what I'm seeing on the on the screen. So but that's okay. For this project. Alrighty. Now comes the red. And I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, since I am using brown, I want to lighten it up a little bit. So even though this is not going to stay white, I'm going to start that as white. Because it's going to lighten up that brown when I put it on there. So that it reads more red than brown. <clears throat> yes, just like that. And when I look at the feathers, it's not a straight line demarcation. Is that the word I'm looking for? Sounds kind of fancy when you're coloring on cardboard. The red kind of comes down around the skull of the bird and up into the chest a little bit, and up into the chin and down into the chest. Now, I'm still not quite getting the color that I want, so it's time to experiment a little bit. I know I don't want to go, I know I don't want to go orange. So I'm going to go a little bit more green brown. And now I think I'm going to go a little bit more red-orange. Still experimenting, still working through it. Adding a little white to the feathers. A little white up around the face. Now, again, those feathers, there's not a distinct mark that separates and divides the colors so they kind of blend together and I think now I'm going to go back in with some of the brown not over the whole thing like we've talked about it's not going to be every feather it's not going to be getting light exactly the same Maybe a little bit more <clears throat> gray back in the bottom. And a little blending of the red tone and the white. Now, if you have a situation like this where you have a dirty pastel, just take a dry paper towel. The cheaper, the better. Just give it a twist like you're sharpening a pencil. Clean the right up. I'll show you some on the right. Now 
Okay, now, as I said, I work from light to dark. So now is the time to get this black oil pastel. Um, oil pastels smear quite easily. Um, when I was teaching the kids, I would not let them have oil, a black oil pastel until it was the very last color they needed to use because it can go real wrong real fast. Real wrong real fast. In a perfect world, this would be a little bit more pointed, but we're not going for perfection today. We are just going for creation. If I were doing this all by myself, not recording, I would have been finished by now. But I'm just trying to slow down a little bit, talk my way through it. I'm going to go back up here to highlight on the beak. And a little more highlight. Sometimes it's just that little highlight that brings it to life. Again, my colors here are a little bit different. I will continue to work on lighting and what works best. Here is the little Eastern Bluebird. And another thing about oil pastels, you can give them an intentional smear. Notice that I'm following the curve of the body. That's going to blend it in a more realistic manner because that is the body is a sphere. And here I'm going to just kind of blend the wing in its natural direction. And what I will do next is put a little coat of acrylic sealer on it so that it will not continue to mark my hands and... Um, not mark other folks if they touch them because these are not intended to be precious. They're practice and their creation. There we go. Thanks for hanging out with me.